The Oakland A's are already having an interesting offseason. They may have gained a stadium, lost a manager, and probably going to see the team gutted. We're going to bring on Jason Burke from Locked On A's to talk about what is already an offseason filled with questions, not a lot of answers. This is Locked On MLB. <laughs> Are locked on MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Where it's your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On MLB your first listen as we're available on all your free podcatchers out there. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. As you can tell from my lower third right here, feel free to call me Sully. Thank you for listening to the show, and thank you for appreciating my shirt. This show is being dropped on the 5th day of November 2021. We're bringing on friend of the podcast, Jason Burke of Locked On A's, to talk about an eventful few weeks that we've had in the East Bay and wondering what it means what it could be to a team in Southern California and what it really means for going on to the Oakland A's. Hey, you can follow us on all your podcasts or here on YouTube. And if you have a smart device, be sure to tell it to play podcast locked on MLB or check out some of the other great shows that locked on podcast network, like, Hey, locked on A's with Jason Burke. Follow me on Twitter. The show is on Twitter, locked on MLB pod, same handle for Instagram. I'm your pal Sully, as you can tell for the lower third here. You, you can follow me at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Well, look at uh, no further ado on this particular situation. Lots of things to talk about. My good friend on the East Bay talk about the Oakland A's, who came up a little bit short this year. Hey, Jason Burke, let welcome you into the show. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Nice shirt, Sully. Yes, look at that, huh? <laughs> Only the best. You know, this is my, I figured it's uh, it's the fall. Might as well dress for it. For those of you just listening to it, I am wearing a Hawaiian shirt right now because why not? Actually, truth be told, it was at the school I teach at. Um, it was Hawaiian shirt day. So oh, kids oh, got a go. kick out of this shirt. So there you go. So <laughs> how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Uh, I would like to be introduced on future podcasts as your favorite guest, as opposed to just friend of the podcast. Um, I feel like we're best friends now, and uh, that would be meaningful to me. <laughs> well, I'm sure you feel that, and I'm not going to dispute that, and uh, I'm sure you believe that. Um, uh, look, it this is a this is a weird year for the Oakland A's. Uh, I actually picked them to win the division. The main reason I picked them to win the division was I did not have faith in the Houston Astros rotation uh and i like the a's rotation a lot and i thought over the course of the year that would lead to more victories uh i did not anticipate that some of the pitchers that the astros had would have better years than expected i didn't think their offense would be as explosive as it was and i did not expect the a's bullpen to be such a train wreck and in so many ways that's what cost the team uh, really, I mean, they let Seattle pass them, and they really cost them a chance. They had a chance towards down the stretch when it was like, you know, that horrific series in Toronto. It just seemed like every other week there was a, an A's bullpen meltdown. And I can't help but wonder, man, if they had just had a few more pieces in there, they would have at least probably contended until the last week. It's generous that you say that it was, uh, you know, every week. It was – it was three, four times a week for a while there. From the end of August through the end of the season, it was bad. Uh, they blew roughly, I think, 12 games in the mm. eighth or the ninth with a lead. And uh, you only blow half of those. All of a sudden, that division is a lot closer. And those la that last series against the Houston Astros means something. Maybe they end up winning if they're playing for something. Uh, right. But, you know, oh, well, it's fine. Now we get to trade everybody. It's great. Yeah. Um, so let's just get to the first things first. And, and I, and I do find this sad. I mean, the A's are a team that, that fascinate me. And I, and I like the, I mean, they're, I'm not an A's fan, but I've always 
enjoy the history of the A's. In fact, if you take a look right uh, right over here, you know, part of this has to do with the fact that I'm I'm writing a book about the '72 playoffs. But here's an A's book, uh, Dynastic, Bombastic, and Fantastic by friend of the podcast Jason Turnbow. Here's another book, uh, Generation A's Fan, written by the one of the early Sully baseball fans, Don Marquez. I got. Uh, Charlie O and the Angry A's, which was a book written in the 70s by Bill Libby. Uh, so we got No More Mr. Nice Guy, uh, the biography of Dick Williams. I also have over here biographies of Reggie Jackson, Catfish Hunter, Raleigh Fingers, Vita Blue. I, I read a lot about the – oh, and and also about uh, the several books by – about Connie Mack, the mm -hmm. athletics franchise is one that is I find to be an absolutely fascinating mm -hmm. franchise, and I rooted for them in a bunch of the years, and I really, really wanted to see them win once, if for no other reason to give us a really good sequel to Moneyball. But also, I've just I think Bob Melvin has just been one of the most interesting and best managers in baseball. And if he's going to win that elusive pennant, it's not going to be in Oakland. And I get it, but I can't help but be saddened that one of those years it didn't all click. I mean, especially after the Braves didn't have a great regular season, they put it all together. Why can't the A's do that once? They won 97 games or the equivalent of it three years in a row, and they just fall apart once it comes to the postseason. They just don't have the right guys and – once you see it year after year after year, maybe it's time for another. Let let's see if this smattering of players works. Kind of kind of ordeal. Yeah. So that's kind of what we're looking at right now. Um, whatever they're whatever they're doing, it doesn't work. They they can win in the regular season, but when it comes, you know, gut punch or gut check time, it's it's a gut punch. So yeah. it's not fun. Well, I think first of all, I think that the San Diego Padres and you know, San Diego has the most underappreciated sports angst of yeah. any fan base. I've called it Buffalo by the sea that they are <laughs> a fan base that has just been kicked in the nuts over and over and over again. And uh, my theory is, is because the weather's nice there, you don't get that sensation of like shoveling your driveway and grumbling about a missed fuel goal. Like you would in Buffalo or, or something like that, or the weather's being nasty in Chicago or Boston or whatever the place that has the reputation of having, you know, not winning for a long period of time, San Diego, they, they had the chargers win the AFL title, I think in 65 or something like that. And now the chargers are gone. LA took away the chargers. LA took away the Clippers. And as I pointed out, the only time the Padres have ever won the World Series in their entire history was in the Gary Coleman made-for-TV movie, The Kid from Left Field. And that doesn't count. And so uh, Bob Melvin is walking into a situation where, you know, it's a, a talented team that I picked to win the 2021 World Series. So I'm not exactly Nostradamus here. But they have uh, two generational talents on them. They have a ton of talent, and they completely collapsed down the stretch, and now they have one of the best managers in baseball, one who took a team with a negative run differential to the National League Championship Series in 2007, and year in and year out with a completely different cast, was able to take the A's to the postseason in 2012, 2013, 2014, was it 2018, 2019, and 2020. That's a lot. I mean, that's more than the Cubs. That's more than the Mets. That's a lot more than the Angels. You know, a lot of big market, big budget, big spending franchises can't claim what Melvin's done. So, you know, it's good for the Padres to bring him aboard. But, man, I I really wish he had that one title in, um, in Oakland. I think that he wishes that he had it too, but he doesn't know what's coming up next. And there's probably some angst with what's been going on with – the stadium situation, them nearly doubling season ticket prices for 2022. They're just a bunch of ownership crap. And he's probably like, I don't want to deal with this stuff anymore. Go, go, let me play with Fernando Tatis. And who wouldn't want to go manage that guy? That sounds yeah. like an amazing gig. Oh, and I'm also so happy for Bob Melvin. <laughs> think about in terms of the stadium. He went yeah. from the, the, whatever it's called now, let's just call it the Oakland Coliseum. Yeah. To 
Petco Park, which is one of the best stadiums in baseball, uh, it's and you know it's a great franchise and everything, or great you know it's a great stadium in the middle of a beautiful city. It is funny. I have to say that uh, just what a week and a half prior, uh, Aaron Boone was re-upped by the Yankees, and almost everyone in the media who defended it were clearly people who like Aaron Boone as a person and defended his, you know, let's face it, sort of odd or lackluster or, you know, completely emasculated style of managing. He's clearly just taking, you know, dictation from the front office. And more than one person, including some good media people like Michael Kay, said, well, if it's not going to be Boone, I mean, who's it going to be? Give me a name. I mean, you're not going to get a better managerial candidate than Boone out there. Going, really? Okay. He said he could go to San Diego. He could go to San Diego. Fine, take him. And <laughs> um, and then all of a sudden, Bob Melvin goes to San Diego. So he's like, hey, I just thought of a name better than Aaron Boone to be the manager. Weird, I just right? thought of one, like Bob yeah. Melvin. I, you know, do, are you going to kick the tires on him? But man, can you imagine? You know, if he if he wins a World Series in San Diego. I'm going to make a weird analogy here, but there was year in and year out when Leland had the Pirates in the you know the NLCS a bunch of years, had them contending with a very small budget and constant turnover in some of the stars, and then eventually when it was just clear, he's like, I can't deal with another rebuild. He signed with the the Marlins who pushed a lot of money to the center of the table and he got his world series ring as the manager of the Marlins. I wonder if that's going to be this situation with, with Melvin, that he's with a franchise that said, we're just going to go for it. And, and with a, with a good manager at the helm. I mean, it, it would make sense. And I think that Bob Melvin's time was coming to an end at some point, most likely he had that mm -hmm. one year left on his contract and they picked it up in June, but so it looked like he might be staying for that one more year, but it was probably going to be a rebuild year. So they're like, eh, if you want to stay, it was always in Bob Melvin's court. So it right. was always his decision. It looked like maybe in June he wanted to stay. Maybe he had a change of heart. And I mean, kudos to Billy Bean in the front office for at least telling him that this, that he was wanted by the San Diego Padres. I thought that the only thing that could keep Bob Melvin in Oakland past next year, if he was going to be staying that long, would be if there were shovels in the ground at Howard Terminal and he wanted to be the manager that opened up that ballpark because he is, well, you know, from, mm -hmm. from the area, that would be mm -hmm. the only thing that I could see keeping him here because he'd have to go through another rebuild because they were yeah. going to trade everybody at some point. Well, just hold that thought for a second because we're going to be talking about that in the second segment here, but I think I need – a little bit of a boost here, a little bit of a boost to energy. And it's, you know, it's November. You know, we got Thanksgiving coming up soon. And I want to tell you something, Jason Burke. I love Thanksgiving. You got all the good food and treats and plenty of them. And, you know, I grew up in Massachusetts and that's right nearby Plymouth Plantation. We had all the traditional fixings. When you think about traditional fixings in Thanksgiving, you got your turkey, you got your yams. You got your mashed potatoes, you got your stuffing, and you've got your built bars, just like they had when Massasoit <laughs> and Miles Standish broke bread in the first Thanksgiving on Plymouth Plantation. Massasoit and Squanto said, Here are our built bars. And built bars were right there with the pilgrims, and they are fantastic. Most built bars are only 130 calories, four grams of sugar, with plenty of protein. And Instead of having that coconut cream pie, they had built bars. So if you go for the raspberry built bar, which is my personal one, I mean, they got so many great flavors covered in 100% real chocolate. And it's a great option when you're hungry. And Thanksgiving is coming soon enough. So go for a built bar, or maybe two. Share some of your family gatherings. It will make things less awkward. Say, no, 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 no. Let's not talk politics. We all agree on built bars. Okay? And they got all new surprises all next month. Limited flavors arriving at built.com regularly. Check the site often. I don't know what it's going to be. Every time they have some combination of coconut and chocolate and chunk, maybe they'll have turkey. <laughs> maybe. There's nothing quite like a Built Bar Black Friday. Mark your calendar. No need to stampede the mall. Black Friday will be a huge event. 
with all sorts of surprises. Here's your offer. Go to Built.com and use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com for, say it with me, Jason Burke, those Built Bars. Built Bar, a Thanksgiving tradition. You All always right. ask me to join in, and I never know what you're going to say. <laughs> Here's the news. Here's the news for you, Jason. I don't know what I'm going to say either. Okay, you welcome back. In, I was like, oh, crap, what did I forget? <laughs> welcome back to Locked On Hawaiian Shirts, where we talk about Hawaiian shirts uh, all year round. Um, I'm here with Jason Burke of Locked On A's. Now, we talked a little bit about Bob Melvin in the previous segment. Now, ever since Charlie O'Finley took the A's from Kansas City and landed in Oakland, prior to the 1968 season, he immediately wanted a new stadium. He immediately hated what he called the Oakland Mausoleum. Now, if he had waited two years, he could have had what is now called Kauffman Stadium, and the A's would still be in Kansas City. Uh, It's the interesting thing, reading about all this stuff, that he courted San Diego, he courted Louisville, he courted Dallas, he courted Atlanta, he courted... uh, uh, there was one other one. I said San Diego, Seattle. Um, there's a bunch of ones that, that he wanted. To, at one point, New Orleans, too. And he settled on Oakland because he felt there was more money to have in the Bay Area. He didn't think what sharing the region with the Giants would have meant. And you could make the argument that he picked the wrong city. That maybe the Bay Area wasn't a two baseball market. Now I happen to have lived in the Bay area for a long time. I was there for 89 when both were in the world series and there for the years when they're both in it. And I loved having two baseball teams in the Bay area. I think it's great. Um, one of them has always struggled with attendance, even if the other wasn't. And maybe there's a couple of years where they both did, but they both succeeded. But the fact of the matter is there's been hanging over this team is the need for a new ballpark. And while I love the experience of going to the Coliseum, and I know you do too, because you're, you go there because you love baseball. You don't go there because it's, you're, it's the cool place to be seen. You go there. You, the people there love their A's. Don't look at the attendance numbers. I don't know there's only 16,000. There's 16,000 people who love the A's and know every player. It's actually a really fun experience if you're a baseball fan to go to an A's game. That being said, as my family moved to the Bay Area in 87, and talk there was about what are the A's going to do about this stadium. So <laughs> talk in, in 1979, when the A's almost moved to Denver, was about the stadium. So forgive me when I hear news about a new stadium in for the Oakland A's to say, I'll believe it when I start seeing it built. Exactly. That is what we're, we've all been waiting for. I know that you have a little bit more history on me, but it's been 20 years since they've been trying to move within the Bay Area, whether that's mm-hmm. Fremont or San Jose or wherever. It's been forever. Yeah. It, it has taken so much of my, it's been more than half of my life too. And uh, wow, it is a never ending saga. It's a, it feels like something's finally going to happen one way or another. They're either staying in Oakland or they're moving to Vegas or Portland or wherever the hell else they want to go. They're going somewhere and it's going to be new and that'll be fun. So we'll get a resolution at some point. That'll be, that'll be exciting. (laughs) Yeah. It's so funny. Look, if you hear about this vote about this resolution with the Howard terminal stadium. Now I've been saying for years that look at, why not just build it in the Oakland Coliseum parking lot? I mean, there's room. And what I wanted to see them do was sort of turn whatever stadium they had into kind of like the, the prototype stadium for innovations. Cause the A's mm-hmm. have always been a team about innovation, mm-hmm. whether it's Connie, what Connie Mack did when he was putting together his teams on a shoestring budget, a lot of stuff Finley did was innovative. A lot of stuff La Russa did. A lot of stuff Billy Bean. The A's have always been a franchise of innovation. And so mm-hmm. I didn't think they should have an old-timey ballpark. I think they should have things like, well, let's experiment with things with the scoreboard or things with screens or things being delivered. to the city. Like, 
Let's give it a whirl. Treat it like a laboratory. So when you go to the game, it's not just the ball game, but you're experiencing, let's give it a whirl in Oakland and see how it goes. And I, I, I wanted that. I thought they want to do it in the parking lot, especially since the Warriors and Raiders are gone, you know, but no one listened to me on that. Um, I, I've, since I lived in the Bay, you know, since I came back to California in 05, all the, the artist renderings, they're going to be downtown San Jose near where the the Sharks are playing. Oh, they're going to move to Fremont. And there's this huge plot of land near apartments and a mall in Fremont just off the Dumbarton Bridge. We're like, there it is, home of the A's. Nope. Here it is. It was at Laney College. Was that it? What is the, what is the college that was there? Like, they're going to build it there. Nope. They're going to build it downtown. Nope. They're going to refurbish the Coliseum. Nope. And you see all these beautiful drawings. You could have a museum exhibit of all the beautiful <laughs> drawings. And I actually worked at Cisco for a little bit. And it was going to be, this was back in 2013, I think it was, when mm -hmm. I worked at Cisco. And oh, it's going to be called Cisco Field. And mm -hmm. here's how what it looks like. If you go to stadiumpage.com, which is a great site where they have all pictures of all the stadiums that exist and also the site pictures of all the unrealized, unbuilt stadiums over the years, there is no shortage of Oakland A's ballparks. And so, you know, forgive me if I'm not reserving my season tickets for the supposed Howard Terminal. Here, I, let me tell you something. I think they're gone. I think they're going to go. I don't we'll want them see. to. I don't want them to, but I think they will. It depends on where they think they can make the most money. That's what it comes down to. Do the A's want to stay in Oakland because they're making progress with the city of Oakland, with the county of Alameda? They're getting these non-binding votes, and they're they're moving they're moving the bill along. And we got a couple of things that they need to get to before they st start getting the binding votes, but. If it's about timeline, which is what they keep saying, because the Oakland Coliseum is no longer viable and they can't do anything, that doesn't make sense. Because if you start building in Vegas or you're doing Portland, you're already years behind where you are in Oakland. You're not getting a, a waterfront ballpark anywhere else. It's where can the A's or John Fisher make money? Where can he have his legacy? I think that the best option for him is Oakland. And sure, I'm a little bit biased because I'm an A's fan and I've grown up with them in Oakland, but mm -hmm. the, it, it's right there in front of them if they want to put in a little bit of effort. And uh, if he's planning on paying for the whole thing, what what does it matter where yeah. where it is? Maybe he gets a little bit more from the city if it's in Vegas and they you know do a little bit there, but Vegas isn't even sure. If you listen to the mayor, if they're actually a viable candidate, they are, they're like, are we being, uh, you know, used as a pawn here just to further, you know, their own advances in Oakland or elsewhere? Um, are we actually a viable candidate for the Oakland A's? And w hearing that from them, I think is a little telling. I think that the A's will probably end up staying. It's, it's right there in front of them if they want it. And I, I, I don't know if I've said this on your show before, but I've said it on my show plenty of times. I don't think that it makes sense for a, a team to relocate to Vegas. If you're going to have a Vegas team, it has to be an expansion franchise because there, there's a bunch of fans of other baseball teams already in Vegas. It does not make sense to try and change your loyalties to this Oakland A's team who's just relocating because well, who wants to root for that team? No, you want to root for your city's team if you're living in Vegas now. It's a lot of transplant people. And if they're already a Yankee fan, they're not going to become an A's fan. They would become a Vegas whoever's fan, though. And I think that that is a big difference. And I think that it is being used as a ploy to put leverage on Oakland. But I don't think that it's necessarily working. Um, so we'll see what happens. But I think that the groundwork is there. It's just the, up to the A's to take advantage. I tell you where I'm going to disagree with you on something here, Jason. I think you're, okay. I think you're, I think you're dead on right on one thing, and that is moving a franchise to Las Vegas would be a, a disaster. Um, mm -hmm. I think, though, I think any team would be. I think what we learned yep. from, you know, the Arizona and from the teams in Florida for years and years and years, because there was a huge period of time where there was no expansion and no moving of teams, but the, the 
what is now called Tropicana Field, used to be called the Suncoast Dome, sat there in Tampa as kind of the leverage for teams to build other team stadiums. Well, we could just move to Tampa tomorrow. We could go to Tampa tomorrow <laughs> because Tampa was looked upon as this great gold mine of a potential franchise or, you know, or location. And Miami was like, even in the movie Major League, the whole idea is they were going to move the team to Miami because that's what was going to be, it was going to be such a rich place. And Phoenix was looked upon as this, you know, this rising metropolis. But you made a great point that people in Florida tend to be transplanted from other places. And so if you, and when you transplant, you stay loyal to the team where you moved from. All those years rooting for the Red Sox. I haven't lived in Massachusetts since 1987. I'm in Los Angeles. I know people wear Phillies hats, Yankees hats, Mets hats, Orioles hats, because that's the thing that they cling to from back home. In Miami, you're going to see more Yankee and Met and Red Sox and Philly fans. Same thing going on in Tampa. They found that there are more Cub fans in Phoenix than there are Arizona Diamondback fans. And Las Vegas is the exact same type of market. And I think it's different for football. Football is a gambler sport. Football mm -hmm. is a sport that is more of a national sport. So if you're going to the casino, it's on once a week. It's like a show. Hockey mm -hmm. worked there because, well, it's, there's some air conditioning in there. And it's the middle of the desert. But it's also hockey is a smaller sort of like. And it you was know, their first team, their first right. franchise. This would be the fourth or fifth franchise for right. Vegas. And so the, the novelty would be gone. Mm -hmm. They're the two places that I think now look at, well, it's just, there's a, there's an elephant in the room and it's not stomper. Okay. <laughs> Baseball has to expand by two teams. If they want to have, if they want to be able to have two, you know, two 16 team leagues where you don't have interleague play every game. And let's get more to the point. You have two expansion franchises paying the expansion fees to help offset some of the costs that they lost during uh, COVID. So there's some money coming in there and the union sees two new 40 man rosters of that. These are things that are going to be important to have labor peace that the owners mm -hmm. get an influx of money and the union gets all new jobs. It's very important. This is the longest we've gone without an expansion since the first expansion. We haven't had an expansion since prior to the 1998 season. That's been a long time. And so we're ripe for it. But you can't have an expansion if you have two franchises that can't figure out if they're going to stay put. So they have to come to a conclusion in Oakland and in Tampa Bay to figure out what the hell are you going to do? Are you going to stay there? Are you going to build a new stadium? Or are we going to move them to a place and then expand into two other, to two other markets? I think the two markets that the A's can work at that could work the best if not Oakland. If, if we're going to say they're going to move out of the East Bay, one is Portland. I think Portland would embrace a baseball team. I think it would make a very simple rivalry with Seattle and but still be able to maintain a rivalry with the Angels. And I think that it's a it's a good sports town and I think they would embrace a baseball team even if it is a transplanted team and there are a mm -hmm. lot of transplanted Californians living in in Oregon these days anyway uh and the other place is Nashville where they've had a minor league team I think mm -hmm. that region whether it's Charlotte or Nashville that region can support a team there's a lot of money there Nashville is a really big city that is can support a team I've been to the ballpark there they could expand it temporarily with, you know, expand it to a 25,000 seat sort of uh, uh, with temporary situation while they build a new ballpark there. And I think Nashville, who went gaga over the freaking Predators, I think they would really support a team there. And the Nashville A's would, I think, would work. Um, I hope they stay in Oakland. And my second choice is moving to Portland. Uh, both the A's and me, but that's a whole different podcast. <laughs> but uh, um, that's what that's I think the, where it would go. I I mean, th that's what I think. You, you're you you're gonna bet that they're gonna go to they're gonna stay in Oakland. I think so. Uh, Portland is a scary place though, because uh, there's a lot of people that would love. I mean, 
if you if you have an A's account, you get a lot of people that say, you know, from Portland, like, oh, I can't wait for the team to move here, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, the Vegas A's and blah, blah, blah. I don't think Vegas is viable. I could no. see the two that you mentioned being viable for the Oakland A's uh, to move to. That would make sense. But again, if they're worried about timelines and they keep saying the timeline, we've we've spent so long doing this without while they're dragging their feet and, you know, it's a political, you know, whatever. Uh, if that's what it, it actually is, and it's not just a talking point because they want the city of Oakland to, you know, give them whatever they want, then they're, they're going to take way longer to build in either of these other places, either Nashville or Portland or Vegas, than they, than they already are with Oakland right now. They, they are on roughly the 20 yard line right now. They are getting close to the goal line with the city of Oakland right now. It's uh, they could have non-binding votes before you know June of next year. Get some shovels in the ground pretty soon. They could they could make this happen fairly quickly if they want to. Whereas they would be as opposed to four or five years, it could be six, seven, eight years for any of those other places. And then they got to figure out leases for the Oakland Coliseum and all that stuff. So, how much are you taking the A's at their word? And that that is that's the million dollar question right now. Yeah, and look at and Vegas is a place where there are people are transplanted there and it's, yeah. you know, the same problem you have in Miami, same problem you have there. People just go there to gamble. That's something that they, yeah. they go there to gamble and making bets on football is I think one of the reasons why the <laughs> Raiders are, you know, are a viable figure. It's not, there's not a lot of people. It's not a lot of, Oh, but this is, we've been in Vegas for generations the way they have in some of the other places. And you, you go there. Why do you go there? You go there to bet, you know, to put your bets down. And if you want to make any bets, go to Bet Online. It's your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season. You know, head to their new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code LOCKDOWN to receive your bonus from basketball, football, baseball postseason, Oakland A's moving location, NHL, boxing, Aww. UFC. Hungry, hungry hippos, right down to your favorite Vegas casino games and favorite Vegas baseball franchises. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online. Say it with me. It's where the game starts. Bet online. <laughs> That is not their jingle. It is now. <laughs> it, we're here oh, with man, Jason. We we're here with Jason Burke of Locked On Las Vegas A's, and um, <laughs> we're here. I'm sorry. Why, here with why, Sully? <laughs> I remember there were people I, I knew in the East Bay. Like, if they move to San Jose, I'll be so angry. Really? You'd be angry if to drive an additional 15 minutes? Really? Really? Yeah, no, if I can get there by, you know, uh, public transit, I am fine with wherever yeah. they go. That's all that I ask. Just public transit. They should have moved. I'm look at. I'll just say it right now. Um, they should have moved to San Jose. That's what I mean. When, when I and again, I, I have a little bit of an advantage over some of the list because I I worked in Silicon Valley. I worked in San Jose for a little while. Um, where they built the new 49ers stadium is is basically san jose i mean it's in santa clara technically but it's 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 when i my office at cisco which was in san jose was right down the block from they were constructing the new ballpark and for the 49ers which by the way that park has been a flopperunio i have yet to hear one person who uh, let me put it this way people were nostalgic for candlestick when they were talking about that stadium and here's the deal. I've been to football games and baseball games at candlestick. That place stunk. That was a like terrible in and place. Out was oh, yeah. rough. Okay. Here's a quick question for you. Mm -hmm. Side tangent. Which one would you rather commute to uh candlestick or Dodger stadium? Oh, that, you yeah. know, what? That's, that's tough. That's really tough because for those of you who don't know, when the Giants moved to San Francisco from New York after the 57 season, um, Stoneham, the, the owner of the Giants, asked the mayor of San Francisco, where's the worst place to put a baseball stadium? And he said, well, Candlestick Point. He said, fine, that's where we'll build it. And 
there was one road, I think it was a one lane road that was dirt and uh, had an old man in a rocking chair saying, you better get on, get, not come here. That's the only lead road that leads <laughs> to the ballpark. And so even on some games where, and I know my mom's listening to it, where I skipped school and went to a game at Candlestick Park in the late 80s, you know, in the afternoon, there's what, 11,000 there, tops? And even then, it was packed coming in and out because there's one road leads in and out. Um, now, the O'Malley's came to Los Angeles and said, hey, in Los Angeles, we have L.A. Wrigley Field. That's where the minor league angels play. We can expand that. And boom, you have yourself a stadium. Said, so, no, 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 no. What we want to do is we see a mountain where there is a thriving community. We're going to displace everybody there, kick them all out of their homes, make them homeless, and burn down their homes, claim we're building affordable housing, and build a stadium there, and then wonder why the Mexican community didn't embrace the Dodgers right away, and build a stadium on top of a mountain, the opposite of Ebbets Field, the quaint neighborhood park. Now they've built basically where Charles Foster Kane lived on top of a mountain where you have to drive up. Look at, don't trash Dodger fans for showing up late and leaving early. Because guess what? I'm as big a baseball fan as you'll ever meet in your life. I went to game one of the 2019 playoffs between Los Angeles and Washington. Okay? I live in in Pasadena, okay, where on the right hill, you could see the light towers of Dodger Stadium. We live close to Dodger Stadium. I didn't make it in time because once you drive up the mountain with your Sherpa and you park, you're still basically in Brooklyn and you have to walk <laughs> eight or nine miles down, up, down, up, you have to put little markers on the ground. You bring lots of built bars for your survival. Mm -hmm. And then you finally get to your seat, and it's the bottom of the second. It is, and then at the end of the game, it basically, if you've seen Mad Max Fury Road, then you have a general idea of what Dodger Stadium's parking lot is like. Because imagine. Ooh, 50,000 cars, because no one comes in a carpool, 50,000 cars with no, absolutely no guidance. And, you know, I'm spraying the thing in my mouth, and I've got the, the, the poles on fire, and the guys with the things going back. I'm going to try to make as many Mad Max Fury Road references <laughs> as possible, because that was the best movie of the last decade. It's such a great film. But it's like, I'm, you know, I'm, so, you know. You know, I'm I'm dr I'm trying to drive through and what a day, what a lovely day, and uh, and, and you know, trucks are on fire, and it's 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 a horrific experience. We're hoarding gasoline, and it takes an hour to get out of the parking lot. Just the parking lot. Just not the parking home. lot. Just not the parking get, lot. Not getting on the not getting on the the one ten back home. No, that's just leaving the parking lot. It's horrific it's experience. It, it is, and and you know what I would say of the two, I think Candlestick. Well, here's the thing though: once you get into Dodger Stadium, Dodger Stadium itself is glorious. It's a yeah. great ballpark. Wonderful and it's a, ballpark. I love watching games there. So it is much. a perfectly designed ballpark where every mm -hmm. angle, every it is, it, it's again the opposite of Ebbets Field, which was designed based upon the streets of Flatbush. Mm -hmm. They had the complete freedom said we're just going to create the ultimate baseball stadium and in so many ways dodger stadium is and when you go there more than probably because it's the it's the second oldest ballpark in the national league mm -hmm. you know only wrigley is an older ballpark in the national league which is weird when you think about it but you see like it it still feels like you can see that's where koufax pitched that's where you know, Don Drysdale, that's where Fernando pitched. That's where the Gibson home run was. All these great memories come flooding up, and it still looks the same. And uh, and so getting there, you, once you get there, the reward is Dodger Stadium, and you look out in the hills and everything like that. It's fantastic. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Just getting in and out is a, is a travesty. 
you got to leave the day before to make it to you know the next night's game. It is. I'm. I have to leave tomorrow to go to a game in April. <laughs> there's still people leaving the Kirk Gibson game. You know, there's. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean the Kirk Gibson game doing A's. But I, but I, I mean, between the Las Vegas A's and Kirk Gibson, I'm having a great segment, Sally. Oh, <laughs> sorry, man. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna start playing the little the song that the little girl was singing at the end of Moneyball. You know. Oh, I love that song. <laughs> um, I don't want to get us in trouble. I don't want to get us in trouble locked on. Uh, you know, to, we don't own the rights to that song. Dum so. dum da dum dum da 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 da. That's a you're, that's a chorus line. You just did a yeah, chorus no, line. I, I was trying to uh, not do it absolutely correctly so that we can't get sued. Ooh. Believe me, but you believe know, me. I, I hit the. First you did not do it correctly. We don't have to worry. <laughs> Locked on lawyers. You could you could go to bed, lawyers. We didn't sing it. We didn't sing it. I'll put the clip on uh, my uh, Twitter feed, which is uh, that, that should definitely be the clip for the show. I wish I had uh, that instead of the, the the music there. Well, look at man, um, your team bullpen cost you a chance to go to the playoffs. Your manager's gone. Your team could move to Vegas. Um. But the bright side is, is um, every once in a while you get a nice box of built bars delivered right to your house. So, I mean, I'm trying, I'm trying to, you know, well, what's good? <laughs> I, I, I hear in between shows. I, if you're if you're a locked on Ace fan, and watch the the last episode that got posted, which was me and Ryan Finkelstein uh, talking about a potential trade of Matt Chapman this off season. Um, I was wearing different clothes. I did a I did a dress. I, I did a change. But in between, I did actually have a built bar because I needed to eat. And I chose the cookie dough chuck. That's the one that I went with. It was right there. It was easy. I'm I'm very satisfied right now. So that that's currently my favorite because it is uh holding me over until way, we have dinner tonight. Cookie dough chunk is my rap name, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> well, look at we ran out of time, but I do want to say the A's are going to trade everybody. So uh, if you want to yeah. hear more about that, tune into Locked On A's. It's going to be fantastic. And actually, the odd thing is uh, Jason Burke is going to be traded. So eventually, he's going to be on like Locked On Brewers or something like that. You know, it's like <laughs> they're trading everyone. Stomper just got dealt to San Diego. It's weird. Uh, good for him. I. I Good market down there. Stomper is going to really enjoy. He's going to shed some pounds, but uh, you yeah. know it, it'll be good for him. It'll be good for him. Well, you you've been good to us, Jason Burke. Tell people where they can listen to your wonderful show. The the wonderful show is uh you know wherever you like to listen to Sully. It's not locked on MLB though. It's locked on A's. So uh we're we're on the YouTube's. We're on all of the podcast providers. We're free and easy on all podcast platforms. And I am at by Jason B on Twitter. The show is at locked on A's on Twitter and Instagram. Yes, and you are nice and easy. Uh, so am I. I'm nice and I'm easy on the eyes, and so is this Hawaiian shirt. You can follow us at Locked On MLB Pods on both Twitter and on Instagram. I am your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Thanks so much for making us your first listen as we're available on all the free podcatchers. Hey, let's have your second listen be Locked On A's. Okay, why not? Let's go. J- Jason, you do a great job there. I do, you know, I'll just want to say, I do hope they stay the Oakland A's. I really do. I, you know, me too. I, I mean, you can throw all the financial reasons and other stuff like that, but for me, I'm not an investor in the Oakland A's. I'm just someone who comes to the Bay Area a lot, and when I go there, I like to know that there's a ball game that I can go to, and if it's not going to be the Giants, I can go over to the A's, and I have many, mm-hmm. many great memories going to the Oakland Coliseum. I've seen several postseason games there and just a lot of you, a lot of great baseball and a lot of great baseball fans like Jason Burke. So, Hey, stick around ace, but eh, take your time building that stadium. Really? Really? It's uh, <laughs> really, you see, yeah, you know, I mean, what, what, what's a few more years, it's yeah, just do a few more days. surveys. Right. <laughs> Let's see some more artist <laughs> renderings. Why don't we see that? Why don't we see Ooh, that? Oh, I would love some new artist renderings. Oh, yeah. That would be, oh, yeah. That'd be a good time. That'd be great. <laughs> All right, everyone. Hey, uh, this has been Locked On MLB for the fifth day of November 2021. It's the off season. It's gonna, we're going to fund this off season. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.